Hi you fellows, how you doing? My name is Raz and welcome to Sound Design Saturday. Saturday! I hope you all have a wonderful week today. And today is a kind of a special episode to me. Episode 15, by the way, we'll be making Kirby's rubber synth using Massive from Native Instruments. And what made this episode special to me is because I just feel so happy about it. I just feel so glad that I was able to kind of create or replicate his sound. Not really exactly, but I honestly think that there are a couple of layers going on in his tracks, but it's really hard to pinpoint which layer is which. So all I did was try to get the cleanest, closest sound as possible that I can. Honestly, I'd like to release a video covering this like a few episodes ago, maybe two or three episodes ago, but it really took me that long to really take time and patiently carve out and come up with this kind of sound. Okay, let's jump into this arrangement that I made. And it might be loud, but it's cool. Rah, here we go. Okay, so yeah, this is the synth that I was talking about, or bass, whatever. It has a couple of things going on, a swell, uh, you know, you know what a swell is. These are short notes. Uh, That's what he does, harmonic. Can't really hear that much, but it it's actually working. Yeah, we get into those macros as well. I'll be covering that for you guys. So let's start. I'm going to insert a new empty MIDI track down here. I'm also going to copy these MIDI clips. Just copy it down there. And, of course, our hero of the day, Massive. Our hero. So I'm going to solo that channel, as well as arm it recording. Oopsie. Turn it down a bit. Okay, so first things first, new sound. I always, I always start with a new sound. And then go in here, turn this off, turn this off, turn it down. We won't be using any vibratos here. You can also start with a blank patch if you already have that saved as a preset, but for some of you guys who have not, just go up and select new sound. Okay, so the cool thing about this is a lot of waveforms work. I, I actually started with Grown 3, and then I tried to move on to throat, throat, this. And then I went to the mellow kind of thing, mellow for 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 Melomantic, I think. But I ended up selecting DG Cook. I don't know why. It doesn't really make a big difference in the sound, but I think it's a waveform that nobody uses a lot. So, yeah. Select DG Cook 1. Pitch that an octave down. Right to the filter 100%. And then you should get the sound. Like that. And then filter one, we'll be using a low pass filter in there, cutoff down, resonance down. Go to envelope number one, turn the attack all the way down, to the K, point that to D, the level, point that to the L. Release all the way up. You should get this kind of weird ski ramp looking thingy. And use that to modulate the filter color for uh, filter one, and point that to around three o'clock like that. All right. You should get this, and let's rename this to Swell. Swell to Swell. Swell. And the Swell modulates the level. Point that to around 2 o'clock. Go to envelope 4, which is controlling our master ramp. And set the attack all the way down. And the release to run the E. And you should get this kind of uh, slope right there. 
All right, now let's go to oscillator two. Set the pitch to plus seven semitones. Select the square saw, which is already loaded as default. Set the wavetable position all the way to the square wave. And for the bend, select formant. Bend option. I'm not sure if formant is uh, is actually bending the sound, but anyways, just set that halfway. Up to around two o'clock, and this goes to filter two. We're in the filter two. We'll be using a low pass four again. Cut off down, resonance down, and let's put the mix up. So there's sound coming up from that, and the mix balance with the two filters back to the center. So there's an equal amount of volume coming up from these two guys right here. And let's just copy the settings that we did, except for what the f except for the level. Tack down the K to the D. Everybody loves the D, especially the ladies. Yeah, level default, release up. So there's a very little difference, just the level. And we're gonna use the same macro to uh, modulate or automate the level. Two o'clock again, just like the first one. And then unfold two modulates the filter color for filter blah, 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 filter two. I'm losing myself. This goes all the way up. I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat, I'm going to look, okay, yes, it goes all the way up, and, and, did it just say and? It's like the British version of and. And we're going to proceed into the next step of this tutorial, what do we go to all slide three right here, to turn it on, set it all the way to the square wave, and intensity all the way up. <laughs> F goes down to around 10 o'clock right there, and it goes straight to filter 2. So turning all the oscillators on, you should get a sound like this. Right. So here's where the fun starts, or when you feel that this synth is going to sound fun. Modulation. This is very important. Turn that on, set the pitch to an octave up, which is 12 semitones. And we'll be using face modulation. We'll be modulating the phase of oscillator 1, so select the 1, and the phase amount to 3 o'clock. Man, I don't really remember things, there are lots of shit that we should do, but yeah, it should sound like that. Turn off noise, the noise we won't be using that. Insert 1, yes. Ah, sign Shaipa, we'll be using this. Shaipa. Man, what? What's going on? I'm starting to speak like a Brit. Dry wet at the center drive somewhere around down to maybe 11 o'clock like that okie dokie what else what else uh, yes effects for the first effect slot classic two drive it all the way up drive to around 11 like that fx2 dimension expander set the size to just before the s and the drive it to nine o'clock Beautiful. EQ. A gentle boost on the bass and some treble. Around one, this goes to two. Let's also check the volume. Okie dokie. And then we'll go to macro two. Let's name this. Uh, what? How did I type? Ha 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 ma. Harmonic. Harmonic. This macro number two goes into the amp of oscillator one as well as oscillator a uh, oscillator two and when you turn the harmonic macro up the seventh uh, note would really start to get in your face so this goes down the volume of oscillator one goes down to give room for the second oscillator right here Just gets louder so that's actually what it's doing and this could be screamed this is um, not really part of the sound i think but i messed around and i thought hey it's pretty good so let's add that in and it goes into the resonance of filter one and this goes halfway set the screen to whatever value like i found a good spot to be around here around 11. so you can't have can this gnarls or screams like that 
and go to oscillator tab right here. Pitch bend up 12 as well as down, so that's a full octave. And just leave everything like that. Voicing, yes, voicing. Max, you like that to go down to two. Unison two as well. Enable the pitch cutoff or the detune. Set the, amount, the lowest amount to 0 0.08. Actually, you could use this, but I, I like to put in the value so I know exactly how much is needed. And the pan position, which gives, gives the sense of stereo width. Turn it on. And this slider right here, set that around here. Around 70% on the way to the right. Let me just check if everything's good. Sorry guys, I don't really remember everything I did. I was just messing around till I kind of got it. Yes. Okay, so let's copy all the effects I have here. Just a, some bunch of EQs, compressors, sidechain reverb, not really anything, anything big. Oh, okay. So uh, in case you want to see what settings I have, EQ, I have this. I have a high pass to leave all the bottom end for our sub. I also have a dip at around 524 hertz just get rid of the, the kind of messy stuff in there a boost at around one point let me check seven one point seven k and i have a high cut or a low pass at 14 k because everything above 14 is uh, like noise and sibilance and nothing really musical up there okay compressor this is one extreme compression setting I just I did it on purpose to give it like a more of a distorted sound, like like it makes it sound like grittier. So I have the shortest attack and shortest release possible with infinite ratio. So it's like a super hard limiter, not a compressor actually. It's a limiter, but you hear that? It sounds good. If you're using headphones, really good headphones, you could really hear the difference. In my monitors right now, I can't really hear them, but if you switch to headphones, definitely. It's a big effect. Side chain, kick start, and some reverb. Nothing really big, just simple stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a color so you guys won't be confused. So the blue one is the first one that I made, and the red one is the new one. So let's have a listen. So this is the blue one, which is the first one. Okay, let's solo the red one, which is the one that we made together. Ah, I should copy the automation. Mm -hmm. Let's go configure the swell. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Okay, so that's all I have to share for today. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching today's Sound Design Saturday episode. And if you'd like to check out more of my work, 
I have links in the description that you can check out. If you also like to drop by, send me a message, ask questions, comments, or just simply a message of warm, kind words, feel free to do so and keep in touch with me. I will try to respond as soon as I read your message. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated about any latest activities as well as future episodes of Sound Design Saturday. Oh yeah! So once again, this has been Raz Leola. I'm wishing you a good day. Have a great weekend, guys. Good luck and God bless you. I'll see you again in the next video. Cheers. Ah.